and for the next uh, quarter of an hour, we have the, the privilege of uh, talking to the best uh, person uh, that can update us on how things are being seen from Brussels, from the European uh, Commission, on the uh, changes in terms of the policies that the European Executive has done in order to cope with all of these uh, uh, problems. So we uh, have uh, with us uh, online uh, uh, Commissioner for, for Agriculture, uh, Mr. Janusz Wojciechowski, who is a leading uh, figure, obviously a very long-standing figure in, in Brussels, having served first as a member of the European Parliament and, and now uh, as a Commissioner. Uh, so, uh, Commissioner, of course, you are very much aware of the concerns uh, that we have here in, in Central Eastern Europe, not only security concerns, but also concerns about uh, the food uh, supply. And I believe during these four years of, of uh, term as Commissioner, you have seen a lot and you have had to deal with a lot of, uh, of matters. Uh, the policies of the EU have had to be adapted to the uh, current uh, circumstances and I am aware that there are still a few files uh, pending and uh, we have the farm to fork strategy still, still pending, we have the changing of the rules for new genomic techniques and uh, pesticides still pending. Can you please uh, update us on where we stand? Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak um, to you this afternoon. It's my great pleasure. Uh, today's discussion will focus on food security, a topic that is very important and, and very timely. Uh, the con consecutive crisis of COVID-19 and the Russian aggression against Ukraine, combined with the growing effects of climate change, have created challenging conditions for farmers and food security uh, in Europe and across the world. Uh, the Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, FAO, uh, estimates that about 780 million people across the world faced hunger in 2022. The latest report on the World Food Programme warns that acute food insecurity is likely to increase in 2024. But at this moment, when the need for cooperation is greatest, food is being used as a weapon. This summer, Russia terminated the Black Sea Grain Initiative and has launched attacks on Ukraine's grain storage and export facilities. Uh, clearly, these actions show that Russia continues to weaponize food and undermine global food security. In response, we must uh, come together to ensure that food is not used as a weapon of war, but as an instrument of peace. Uh, first and foremost, the European Union is, uh, and its member states have formulated a joint response to the immediate crisis with a commitment of at least 18 billion in grants for the period 2021-2024. Uh, Africa and Middle East, the regions most affected by food insecurity, will receive around half of this support. We are also taking a wider range of actions to strengthen food security in the medium and uh, in the medium to long term. For example, we are committed to supporting exports from Ukraine, who normally supply around 45 million tons of grain to the global market every year. We need to support all efforts to facilitate exports of Ukraine's grain and other agricultural products to the countries most in need, notably in Africa and Middle East. Following Russia's decision to terminate the Black Sea Grain Initiative, Solidarity Lanes have become the only roads available for Ukraine's exports and imports. Uh, between May 2022 and September 2023, these alternative roads have allowed uh, Ukraine to export 102 million tons of goods, including 57.8 million tons of agricultural goods, uh, a large portion of which has been grain, oil seeds and other related products. To ensure that these essential exports can continue, especially to the countries most in need, 
The European Union has been working closely with Ukraine and neighboring states, as well as with international companies and transport operators to improve the functioning of our solidarity lanes. Since May uh, 2022, we have streamlined procedures, improved traffic management systems and increased uh, staffing levels. For the future, there has been agreement to increase capacity along the Danube road by making better use of unused capacity of certain ports, uh, particularly Constanta. Uh, I applaud the efforts of everyone involved. All, uh, as all sides have invested significantly in infrastructure, including industry. Uh, we will continue to increase the capacity of the existing roads, lowering their cost and de developing further alternatives so that Ukraine can export its products to its traditional markets, which are key for global food security. Addressing food security is uh, also an essential part of our work as multilateral level. The European Union at, and its member states have been actively engaged to mobilize the inter international community and to cooperate with key partners and international organizations. At the Daily Leaders Summit in September 2023, G20 members renewed their commitment to improve global food security in line with Sustainable Development Goal number two. Importantly, that uh, they also endorsed the DECAN high-level principles on food security and nutrition negotiated at the G20 Agriculture Ministers meeting in Hyderabad in June uh, 2023. Uh, the G20 most important contribution remains the Agriculture Market Information System, whose uh, remit has been expanded to cover developments in key areas such as fertilizers. G20 members have uh, prioritized uh, the continued funding of the system to ensure better transparency in global food commodity markets and to mitigate the sharp edges of extreme price fluctuations. Of course, more uh, remains to be done, including the in the area of transparency. It is also challenging for the uh, G20 to speak with one voice on food security when uh, one of our members actively engaged in military strikes against agriculture and export infrastructures. In this context, it is important to note that the G7 has been highly outspoken on the food security uh, fallout of Russia's aggressions, aggression. In, its members continue to be the largest uh, humanitarian donors and uh, uh, aid providers for food insecure areas. This shows that mi uh, multilateral responses work when the involved parties agree to act within the rules of international law. In addition to the work in multi multilateral organizations, bilateral trade relations have an important role to play in stabilizing sources of, uh, of supplies. The stability and security of supply chains and trade flows are essential to the functioning of the global food system. In this context, free trade agreements can provide a firm base to long-term partnerships and allow for smooth and uninterrupted trade by policing with transparent and well-established rules. In the current geopolitical political climate, uh, the vast uh, network of uh, free trade ag agreements established by the European Union stabilizes relations with like-minded countries. In the short term, these agreements are important for food security by smoothing trade and the functioning of food supply chains. They are also important in the long term uh, because they enhance trade diversifications and therefore the resilience of the European Union agri-food system. 
Finally, trade agreements pay increasing attention to environmental and social standards, contributing to the broader goal of sustainable development in its their dimensions, economic, environmental and social. For instance, uh, European Union uh, recent trade agreements include chapters on trade and sustainable development and the modernized agreement with Chile should include a chapter on sustainable food systems. This enables Europe to play a leading role to reinforce the resilience and sustainability of global food systems. Ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, the challenges facing global food security are significant and complex. We can only address these challenges by working together to deliver pragmatic and effective solutions. Whether it is reinforcing solidarity lanes, building consensus in multilateral organizations, our working to ensure strong and sustainable international trade, the European Union intends to drive these solutions and take the lead in safeguarding global food security. On that note, I would like to thank you for your time. I wish you constructive forum and I look forward to the hearing outcomes of our discussions today. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. Uh, if you still have a couple of minutes for, uh, for questions. Yes, I, please. Um, I'd like to see if there are any questions from the room. Otherwise, I have something prepared. Uh, as we are now going towards the end of the mandate of, of this uh, commission uh, and the farmers across uh, Europe need uh, predictability for, uh, for uh, the uh, legislative agenda, as we know there are still a few files pending in the, uh, in the European uh, Parliament, uh, such as the, the rules for the, the pesticides, for the new uh, genomic techniques that the parliamentarians, as far as we know, are trying to push these files, uh, but there are still a lot of political divisions uh, there, compromises need to be uh, reached whereas uh, the, the farm-to-fork uh, strategy in the end was um, uh, delayed because it has to be adapted to the new uh, context. How do you see um, the legislative agenda for the next, uh, what, seven, eight months uh, remaining of this uh, mm -hmm. parliament and commission terms? Can we expect on, uh, some of the, this legislation being, being adopted or will this be pushed through the next uh, political cycle? Mm -hmm. Thank you for this question, but this is not directly my responsibility as the Commissioner for Agriculture that um, I can say that uh, now we have this year is the first year of the uh, uh, new common agriculture policy. After a two years transition period, we started our co new common reform common agriculture policy uh, with national strategic plans. Each member state submitted the strategic plan that which was approved by the European Commission. We started this new policy with many instruments of the green, uh, green transformation of our uh, agriculture, green architecture in the strategic plans. Uh, eco schemes, uh, mandatory for member states, voluntary for farmers, uh, the practices like uh, carbon farming, uh, more attention to animal welfare, four times more uh, expenditure for uh, improving of my animal welfare standards than in previous than in previous common agriculture policy. But your question was about the some initiatives uh, proposed outside of the common agriculture policy, like pesticides uh, uh, regulation, uh, which is now the the, the topic of the uh, uh, negotiations between uh, between co-legislators, uh, council and uh, and uh, parliament. Um, no, I, I have no answer. What what would this be uh, timing of 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 the decision of of these uh, questions? There are some controversial um, question like uh, uh, pesticides regulation. The main problem to solve is fair approach to the different starting starting points in member states because uh, the use the level of use of pesticides can be measured by this. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the indicator is to use uh, um, how much is used of the active substances per, per one hectare. And differences across the, the, between the member states is like uh, there, there, there is the countries uh, with the highest use is 
uh, using uh, uh, nine kilograms of active substances per hectare, but the countries like our host Romania, where it's 0 0.6 kilograms per, per hectare. And this is the problem how to find a fair, fair approach, uh, taking into account this different situation across the member states. Uh, and uh, but uh, as I said, this is the uh, res responsibility of other members of the Europe European Commission. This is not a part of the uh, uh, common agriculture policy. Yes, understood. All right, we just have uh, three uh, more minutes. Um, uh, I would like to, to pick up uh, your, your views also uh, because you mentioned uh, the trade agreements that the European uh, Union uh, has negotiated, is negotiating. And uh, as we know at the start of this European Commission, this has been labeled as a geopolitical commission uh, trying to leverage, uh, among others, also trade agreements with international uh, actors, including those in the, the sphere of the democratic uh, uh, Western society. Uh, as a way to, to pull together this uh, club of uh, democracies. However, some of these trade agreements have faced difficulties, especially for the negotiation and the agricultural chapter. And uh, as we know, the, the Mercosur agreement is uh, being stuck uh, because of this. And, and so uh, the, the agreement with uh, Australia. Uh, how can we reconcile this? How can we reconcile uh, defending the interests of the European uh, farmers on the one hand and on the other hand, uh, still uh, connecting the uh, European Union with others to, to ensure food security? Okay, thank you for this question. And uh, no, first of all, uh, we uh, have to remember that the uh, European Union uh, is uh, the biggest food exporter in the world. The, our surplus in the uh, agri-food trade is uh, just about the 60 billion euro last year. And uh, our interest as a European Union is uh, to have open, open uh, international trade because we are uh, generally European Union is beneficial. We are uh, benefiting this this uh, this uh, uh, trade, open trade. Then our interest is to reduce the all potential barriers and to 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 increase the the, the international trade. But from the other hand, you're right. There are some. Um, we have the partners uh, like Mercosur. You you mentioned when the, the, the balance trade balance is negative for, for, for our farmers. This is, uh, 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 this is the situation with uh, Mercosur, with uh, last time in, with Australia. Uh, the negotiation with Australia, I participated as a, uh, representing the, the uh, uh, agriculture part of these this negotiations and we uh, decided to not to finalize uh, agreement with Australia because of interest of, of, of farmers because of the Australian request was too high, it was not acceptable for taking into account the interest of the, of the European farmers. But this is very important to know that uh, no, we, we uh, have a, um, uh, evaluation what is the potential consequences for, for European agriculture. Agreements like Mercosur means uh, about the 2 billion euro additional import to, of the agri-food products to the European market. Agreement with Australia is less than, than, than 1 billion. And, uh, but relations with Ukraine, uh, 2022, the increase of uh, uh, agri-food import from Ukraine to the European Union market, uh, the value of import was increased from 7 billion to 13 billion euro. Six, uh, uh, 6 billion euro more import than before the war, 2021. Now, first of all, the, the import of grain, of uh, cereals, oil seeds. But um, it shows that uh, it was a real shock, in the, especially in the frontline countries, frontline member states, like Romania, like, like Poland, uh, Slovakia, Hungary, Bulgaria, it was a huge problem in the market in these countries. It was the reason that European Commission decided to introduce temporary ban for some products, for products, um, wheat, maize, uh, ripe seed and, and sunflower seed. Um, 
but it's very important that it was not against the, the um, it was not disruptive for Ukrainian uh, export for transit because the um, solidarity lanes uh, transit via solidarity lanes before this uh, this temporary ban 2000 uh, which was introduced 2nd of May uh, to 23 it was just about the 3 million tons per month uh, and during the um, uh, functioning of this 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 ban the export via solidarity lanes uh, in transit was just about the 4 million tons this is a uh, huge achievement and uh, first of all Romania is the country uh, which is uh, play, playing the, the, the main role in the in the solidarity lanes. I think it is uh, it is it was successful action. But returning to the to the trade agreements, yes, that uh, uh, our interest is to have the open trade. By in some agreements, this is the very important question to protect interest of our farmers. And agreement with last last uh, weeks in Aust negotiations. If Australia shows that we uh, uh, we uh, protect our our farmers, we don't uh, uh, leave their interest. Uh, we don't pay the, the interest of farmers on the for the other interest in, in the in the trade. And on, on the other hand, as far as I saw, the relations with uh, with Japan and Canada are uh, easier in terms of, uh, of agricultural uh, co cooperation. I just uh, uh, saw your, your visit to Japan, and there is the upcoming EU Canada uh, summit that will deal also with agricultural products. Are we? It's, is it easier in in these countries to to cooperate? Yes, no, no. For example, uh, with Japan, there is we have very uh, we export uh, many times more than we import from Japan. And uh, yes, of course, but uh, as, as uh, uh, about the Japan, I have the experience uh, because uh, we had the promotion mission, mission promoting our food in the Japanese market uh, with representative of the, the European uh, no, food industry and representatives of farmers also. But it shows that how important is the quality of our food. This is, we have a very uh, good promotion uh, value of our food, the quality of food, which is very important for, for our partners, especially in Japan. Uh, Japanese uh, consumers, they, they want to know what is the food, the history of food. Geographical indication is very, good uh, uh, for the promotion, very good system uh, to inform our partners, consumers, uh, what is the history of the products, what is the, the products which is the part of the, our heritage uh, uh, food, uh, food as a, as a part of uh, heritage, local, regional. Uh, and this is very important. We, we should to continue this uh, 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 promoting, uh, promotion of our food uh, as a high quality food. Uh, I think the general European Union has uh, uh, no chance in the international compet global competition uh, in intensive, uh, to producing more and more intensive. Our chance, our success is to produce more and more uh, uh, high quality standard food. This is the uh, chance of, of uh, European food production, European farmers in the global market. Commissioner, unfortunately, we run out of time. Thank you very much for, uh, for your contribution to Bucharest Forum 2023 and for your uh, generosity to, to share your insights and uh, good luck uh, for the, the rest of this uh, mandate, which has certainly not been an uneventful one. Um, and uh, with that, I think we move to, to the next section. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon.